morning and welcome in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Today I want to spend a few minutes talking about the highest calling. On an occasion, Jesus spoke these words in Matthew 4 and verse 19. Come, follow me, and I will make you fishers of men. I want to emphasize the word come, and we'll elaborate it on it just a little later. So, question, what would it take for us to walk away from everything that we have? I guess the answer would probably be something like this. It would probably depend on what I am offered that might help replace everything that I will give up. Well, today I, I want us to look in upon Jesus. I, I want us to listen to his first command that he ever gave while he was recruiting some evangelists. He would ask them to walk away from everything that they owned. In fact, the first commandment of Jesus in Matthew's gospel is a single word, come. And when Jesus says, come, it's like it rings with authority. Just let me give you some Bible references here. Uh, Jesus spoke to the general public with authority. And he said in Matthew 11 and 28, Come to me, all you who are weary and burdened, and I will give you rest. He said to the rich young ruler in Mark 10, Come, follow me. To Zacchaeus, when he was in the tree, Jesus cried out, Zacchaeus, come down immediately. And when Lazarus was in the grave for four days, Jesus came along, went to the grave site, and said to Lazarus, Lazarus, come forth. Or one translation says, Lazarus, come out. And so Jesus is speaking with authority, and the folk that he spoke with or spoke to had paid attention. Well, here's the situation today. Jesus is walking by the Sea of Galilee, and he sees a number of guys who are fishing. Now, at that particular time, the fishing industry didn't sustain a huge income of money, but the men were not necessarily poor. They made enough of money to live a good life. And on this particular day, being simple fishermen, working at the simple task of working their trade, Jesus comes along. Now, I want to emphasize that they were just two ordinary people, John and Peter. They were so ordinary that after Jesus had called them and the church was birthed, it was said of Peter and John in Acts 4 and 13, when they saw the courage of Peter and John and realized they were unschooled, ordinary men, they were astonished, and they took note that these men had been with Jesus Christ. These fishermen would have been used to hardships and hazards, and, and coming from a fishing village in Newfoundland, I know something of the hazards of being a fisherman. Their trade is laborious, it is perilous, it is hazardous. It is something that daily, when they go out on the water, many times they're literally taking their lives in their own hands. And so here are the fishermen. Try and picture the scene. Jesus kind of nonchalantly comes along, sees them fishing, and says, Come. Come. And, and I can almost hear the conversation, though it's not recorded in Scripture. 
I can almost hear Peter and John saying, but, but sir, as they had no idea who this guy was, but sir, th this, this is our livelihood. And if we come, what, what will we do with all of our equipment? What we will do for an income? How will we sustain ourselves? How would we sustain our families? And they might have even asked the question of Jesus, if we're going to come, can we even say goodbye to our families, to our friends, and to our neighbors? In fact, it could be a little funny, and I can imagine Peter and, and John looking upon themselves in their work clothes and saying, but Jesus, we stink of fish. How can we just leave everything and come? Well, Jesus will call us right from where we are, fish, smell, and all. The Bible says of Jesus asking us to come, in 1 Corinthians, it says, Remember, dear brothers and sisters, that few of you were wise in the world's eyes or powerful or wealthy when God called you. And that's exactly the position that Peter and John were in. Because Jesus saw them more than just fishermen, and we'll expand on that in just a moment. And in 1 Samuel 16, we read when they were trying to select the king for Israel, the Bible says, The Lord does not look upon things that man looks at. Man looks at the outward appearance, but the Lord looks at the heart. And on that day, when Jesus walked on the beach and he saw Peter and John, he saw their heart. And he said, come. And then he followed that up with another phrase, come, follow me. Well, who, who is this stranger? We teach our children not to follow strangers. We deter them from getting involved even in conversation with strangers. But this guy comes along, approaches two fishermen, and simply says, come, follow me. Who is this guy? Well, the Bible tells us a lot about this person. Jesus said, I am the light of the world, and whoever follows me will never walk in darkness, but will have the light of life. Whoever follows me. And Jesus said to these guys, follow me. He said in John 10 and 27, my sheep, they listen to my voice. I know them and they follow me. Again, whoever serves me must follow me. And where I am, my servant also will be. And so, when we hear Jesus coming and calling and asking us to follow, we are obedient and we respond. Also, when he calls, we must be conscious of the fact that we must be focused upon Jesus. Learn to understand who he is. Study who he is so that when the command to follow comes to our spirit, we will make a conscious decision to follow the Lord Jesus Christ. In fact, on two occasions in the book of Hebrews, it says of us in relationship to God and Jesus, fix your thoughts on Jesus. We, we face so much white noise in our lives today that it's so difficult to focus our thoughts on Jesus. And then later on, the author of the Hebrew says, fix your eyes on Jesus. You know what, ladies and gentlemen? When we fix our thoughts and we fix our eyes upon Jesus and we hear him call, come, follow us, that following will be made a lot easier when we meditate and concentrate upon Jesus Christ. 
Also, when we follow Jesus, the Bible tells us that we must be prepared as Christians to even be rejected by the public, to suffer with Jesus, and even face persecution. In fact, Jesus said, when the world hates you, just remember, it hated me first. And so a conscious decision for the higher calling must be from the heart, where we respond positively when we hear the voice come. You see, it doesn't matter how much we suffer at the hands of the world, because the Bible says, but to all who believe Him and accept Him, He gave the right to become the children of God. So God calls us as he called the two fishermen to become his followers, and we are children of God. Now, when Jesus said, come, follow me, he continues with, and I will make you. Wow, that's something we need to pay attention to. Something awesome is about to happen to these two ordinary fishermen. You see, Jesus, even today, is calling all people from all walks of life to come and follow so that he can change us, transform us, and use us for the sake of the kingdom. White collar, blue collar people, or no collar at all, Jesus doesn't need our capabilities as much as he needs our availability. Because when Jesus calls us, he will equip us. In fact, Jesus said, apart from me, you can do absolutely nothing. And again, Paul reminds us, it is not that we think we can do anything of lasting value within ourselves. Our only power and success will come from God. And so God will make you and create and recreate. God will mold us. God will prepare us. God will lead us and sometimes literally carry us in his arms. And the last stanza or the last phrase he said, I will make you fishers of men. Wow, the word fishers for John and Peter obviously sounded rather authentic. The greatest calling that can come to a disciple of Christ is that of being a soul winner, introducing other people to Christ. What a high calling that you and I can have within our own lives. The Bible says, the fruit of the righteous is a tree of life, and he who wins souls is wise. Amen. And then we read from Paul's writings, Though I am free to belong to no man, I make myself a slave to everyone to win as many as possible for Jesus. And so today, the high calling of you and I is to become fishers of men. Just pray that you will meditate on that, think about that, pray about that, and let God be Lord of your life. Amen. Have an awesome day. God bless you. Amen.